Steve! How are you? On your way? Yeah, no, I'm at the studio. Yeah, but the cable's out. Do you know anything about that? No, I'm on hold with the company. Yeah. So, I don't... Oh, here they are. Yeah, let me call you back. Okay. Hello, you've reached Term Warner Cable. Your call may be monitored and recorded for training and quality. It will help expedite the call if we can pull up your record. Please enter or say the phone number associated with your account, starting with the area code. 718-625-6025. You said 718-625-0685. Is this correct? No. You said no. Is this correct? Yes. You said yes. Is this correct? No, I I mean I You said no. Is this correct? Oh. I help. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Let's try again. It will help expedite the call if we can pull up your record. Please enter or say the phone number associated with your account, starting with the area code. 718-625-6025. You said 718-625-0685. Is this correct? No. You said no. Is that correct? Yes. You said yes. Is that correct? No, I... I oh. The number you gave does not match any account in our records. Please enter or say the phone no. number associated with your account, starting with the area code. Help! Let's try again. Please enter or say the phone number associated with your account. Uh-huh. And we're going to get a deep look at this wonderful song by John Coltrane, Mr. PC. Check out how you can get more videos like this one. Just navigate to Bruce Gregory Video On Demand. When you get to the site, you can browse videos in a wide variety of categories. Each video covers a different topic and has bonus content and supporting documentation. There's even a free trial option. Don't forget to use your promo code to get a discount off your first purchase. And the link for that promo code is in the description down below. Now, if you dig the video, throw it a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell notification because that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. So let's get started. Mr. PC by Mr. John Coltrane. Man, this is a burning, burning tune written by John Coltrane for Mr. Paul Chambers. Of course, as the story goes, Paul wanted John to write a tune that wasn't so complex. Of course, he did. He wrote Mr. PC, and then he called it at 300 beats per minute. Uh, That's the way John rolled back in those days. So, this is a great tune, particularly if you're getting into jazz or if you're an experienced player, because I'm going to show you a lot of different tricks on this particular tune. Now, let's check out the melody. tune is a classic one again it's where i love to start on every tune because it really outlines the minor blues changes it starts on c minor and then it takes it right to the four chord in minor blues format to f minor and john's turnaround's a little bit different a lot of times we might see a minor seven flat five to a flat nine seven but john basically took the tritone sub a flat seven then the G7 or G7 sharp 9, depending on how you want to look at it, back to C minor. And that's the entire form. Now, the melody, I'm going to walk you through it. And there's a lot of different ways to play this melody. I took a little bit of artistic right on this one. It basically walks up a minor scale. And that's really the first part over that C minor 7. Then he just outlines the F minor 7. And brings it back to the 1. And then, of course, that classic minor pentatonic line. G7, 
John Coltrane was masterful at playing the blues, something he learned from listening to Charlie Parker, and he used it all through his playing. In fact, on this recording, if you listen to him, many times he's playing minor pentatonic or he's playing melodic minor. Now, you know melodic minor is very similar to that Dorian scale, except with that major seven. <laughs> take us through this tune. It's just basically playing C minor pentatonic. You can kind of get away thinking of this as modal, weaving in between minor pentatonic or, as I said, C melodic minor, because the changes will support all of that. So we can treat it as one concept. <laughs> look at this tune holistically. However, we can get deep inside these changes and we can think of it as individual changes. Something that I learned from listening to players like Mike Stern and of course Pat Martino and George Benson on this tune. So over that C minor 7, there's many different ways I can go, but typically I tend to play Dorian over the one chord. Now, I could use natural minor or even melodic minor or harmonic minor, and sometimes I kind of do, but are really focusing on Dorian over that one chord for good reason, because then it gives me some contrast when I'm going to the four. So when I'm approaching that four chord, I'm not purely just thinking of going to F Dorian, which would might be the natural thing, or we could think of it as C melodic minor or C harmonic minor. I'm thinking of that one chord then becoming a flat nine or a flat nine seven. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the one chord and then making it a flat nine seven. And that creates some tension to get us to resolve to that F minor seven right? So that's a fantastic way. But you might be asking, well, what are we going to do over that? So we just treat that as a flat nine for basically one bar. Listen to my solo. <laughs> Because really what's happening there, again, and if you looked at any of my lessons on jazz standards, you must know, it's a way to move chords. Anytime we can throw in a dominant chord, particularly a flat nine, we can do all those Charlie Parker-esque kinds of things. <laughs> So, we've got the one, the approach to the four, and the four chord. Now we're just looking at the turnaround. And the turnaround A flat seven, think about it as a non-resolving dominant. It's not resolving anywhere, so what do we play over non-resolving dominant? <laughs> Melodic minor. Now, I'm kind of thinking of this as E flat melodic minor or a flat Lydian flat seven, if you can pull all that out. And that's what I'm doing over that chord for the most part, resolving to that G7. And I'm kind of thinking harmonic minor, C harmonic minor over that chord. Let's listen to how I approach it. <laughs> You have thinking of it modally through minor pentatonic or as melodic minor, or you can think of each individual chord change. And then the last part is really thinking about how you comp over this and using comping rhythm. Now I'm going to pull in some of the things that I taught you in Have You Met Miss Jones or All of Me when we think of solo guitar playing and playing those chords. Now it comes out where it's really, really important to have those skills in your tool belt because we can play a lot of rhythmic kinds of things with chords on this tune and it's a fantastic one to do. Check it out. One line in particular I really dig is a line that I picked up from a pianist where they basically hold one note and then comp. So 
So they're basically holding a note in their right hand and then comping with their left hand or vice versa. It kind of goes like this. I'm playing the C minor 9 and I'm grabbing that D on the top and I'm pedaling that D while I play basically an E flat triad or a C minor 7. And I can bring it right from the one chord directly to the fourth. And it's also movable, so I can move that E flat triad. It's a wonderful approach to create a lot of dynamic in your solo. So this tune typically played at a very fast pace. Now, I played it at a slower pace in the intro, but on the exit of this video, you'll hear me play it up to tempo, which is upwards of 300 beats a minute. And so being able to comp and comp in different ways is a great strategy. Of course, at a slower tempo, we can use all those wonderful C minor seven inversions. It's not simply just a minor blues. Now, let me give you one last tip for this particular tune. It's a strategy I learned from an old time saxophone player by the name of Jackie McLean, one of my mentors. He looked at me and said, you know, Mr. PC, people struggle over those half step dominant chords. You can treat this as a regular minor blues. You can take the turnaround as D minor seven flat five to G7 flat 9, right back to the 1. And if you do that, it's another modal way of playing this tune in a lot of ways, because you can then use harmonic minor or natural minor or Dorian on the 1, and then natural minor or harmonic minor over the rest of the form, and treat it as a traditional minor blues. And in fact, here's one last bonus tip. Go back and listen to the Giant Steps album and Mr. PC, and you'll find that the band basically goes between the two forms a lot of times, and so does Train in his solo. <laughs> one burning tune. It's one you need in your toolkit. It's not a very complex tune, but we can play over it many different ways. It's a great tune, again, if you want to bridge into solo playing. It adds so many different dynamics. We can think of it as a modal tune. We can think of playing every individual change. And don't forget that bonus tip of using a different turnaround with the minor 7 flat 5 to the G7 flat 9 back to the one and think of it as a traditional minor blues. So there's a lot of opportunity when it comes to this tune. And one last tip, don't forget comping. Comping's a big thing. 95% of your guitar playing will be comping. So remember, we can use all those rhythmic approaches we bring in from solo guitar playing. If you dig this video, make sure to check out my video on Just Friends and all of my videos on the VHX.TV site. Of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. I will see you next time. Peace. Ooh.